guys, today we're going to be taking a quick look at some of the features of iOS 5 for the iPad. First we've got the brand new notification center which is built into iOS 5. So it probably looks, it would look better than that but I have no notifications at the moment. So some of you from the jailbreaking scene will probably notice similarities from different apps available on Cydia at the moment and that have been for quite some time now. Uh, Apple like to steal things from other developers so that's not a surprise there. Uh, nice simple layout on the notification center and you can control what's shown just by going into the settings and on notifications and you've got on the iPad you've got uh, mail reminders messages so if you're using iMessages on the iPad uh, calendar, game center and I've got Angry Birds on there. So uh, we'll obviously show any other application that's compatible with it. You can organize these manually in order or by the time or which notification is the most recent. If you click on an individual application there, you have quite a few options on how you want to be notified and whether it's viewable in the lock screen. I've got it set so it shows the banner at the top just like the iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch. You can also have it notify you the old way in the little pop-up box in the center of the screen. Everything in the notification seems to work really well both on my iPhone 4 and on the first, gen, first generation iPad. second feature we're going to be looking at is tab browsing on the iPad. It's uh, currently not available for iPhone or iPod Touch users, but someone, a developer on Cydia will most likely create some tweak to enable it. As you can see, the tab bar just comes up at the top there. You click the arrow to create a new tab. And then if we're going to Google. See, it's just it's basically you click between the tabs, no animation whatsoever. It's uh, very quick to switch in between each one. I don't think it's a needed feature of iOS 5, but it does somewhat speed up the process of switching between tabs in Safari. The last feature I want to talk about in this video is the new split keyboard feature which is only available on the iPad. So if we go into Notes, it can be activated by holding, either holding down the keyboard icon on the bottom and uh, moving your thumb up to Split or Undock. Undock basically unlocks it from the bottom of the screen and Split will split the keyboard into two different parts which you can use just by using your thumbs like that. So if we go and type something. Obviously it's quite difficult to type when you're looking at the camera as well. But so I got the got a similar feel to if you're using a mobile phone or using the keyboard on the iPhone. I did notice the other day a very similar feature which was announced in Windows 8 which they state that they thought of themselves I'm not saying they didn't but both keyboards, split keyboards, seem to be remarkably remarkably similar in the way they work obviously there's a few bugs in iOS 5 the way it operates and works so it's still fairly smooth but I have noticed a few few little bugs regarding music player and and the uh, draining of the battery life that seems to go down slightly quicker than uh, iOS 4.3 I have to remember it still is in beta testing so those little bugs and problems should be ironed out by the final release sometime in the next few months Thanks for watching. They were a few of our um, 
favourite features of iOS 5. If you uh, like this video or want to see any more, click the subscribe button above, somewhere there. And uh, don't forget to comment, like and favourite this video.